Hello and welcome to Telegraph Studios. I'm Alistair Greener and today we're talking about food manufacturing systems. And joining me are Harry and Jake Norman from OAL. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Now, whenever we go to supermarkets these days, we get loyalty cards, we get discounts, we get vouchers, we get all sorts of different things from them. But obviously, the manufacturers aren't giving up their profits. So is manufacturing actually becoming cheaper? Food manufacturing is a very tough industry. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of price pressure. There's a lot of pressure around traceability and food safety and food quality as well. And really, there's a, and there's a lot of drive from consumers because consumers want more because food is life. So with this pressure, is it the quality or the quantity that manufacturers give up first? You can't give up either. Quality has to be there and you have to be able to produce big, large volumes of food products. But what is a real problem is actually creating differentiation in the marketplace. So it all sounds a little bit gloom and doom. Is there any way out of this? It's disruptive change, Alistair. That's really the way forward. You've got to think outside the box. What do you mean by disruptive change? Let me give you an example. There's a manufacturer in the northwest of England. They were manufacturing eight, 100 SKUs so hugely complex business and basically we've worked with them using our new technology to go from 100 SKUs down to 8. They've now taken 25% of market share in their frozen food category and we've used steam infusion to actually produce those products at something like three times the speed of conventional technology. Now the benefits seem quite clear, so why are manufacturers missing out on this opportunity? Manufacturers are doing the right thing they're securing their investment and protecting their future. Turning things upside down is not the right thing. Unfortunately, disruptive change isn't turning things upside down. It's improving the efficiency of their current investments and really securing that future. OK, so let's say I accept your arguments and I recognise that technology is the enabler here. Is there anything else that I should be aware of? Like all these things, Alistair, it comes down to people. In any business, it's critical. Once you're bringing about changes, especially disruptive changes, you've got to bring the team on board with you, basically. So it's all about the people. So let's say that I bring you guys in uh, into my food manufacturing process. Talk me through the procedure of what's going to happen when I sign up with right. you. Well, the procedure is pretty straightforward. What we need to do is really understand your business, your people, your processes, how it operates. I'm not going to just come and tell you what to do in your business. I need to really, really focus on getting that understanding and working with you. Once I've got that knowledge, I can basically do the magic. And that's when the actual disruptive technology comes in and you see these kind of step changes in performance. And we've got test centres so you can test products, you can test different applications out. We've got 3D scanning. Absolutely. We can scan the whole of a factory yeah. and recreate it in CAD. So there's some of these fantastic technologies you can cut and, cut and paste to, to actually give you the results that you're looking for. So it sounds a bit like a customised solution. So the question is, how do you actually achieve that customisation? Well, if you think of it like Lego, we've got all these different blocks, all different shapes and sizes to fit around our customers and what their factories or future factories want to look like. We can then arrange these and integrate these so they all talk to each other and, and basically allow you to get, make these efficiency gains and improve product quality. The challenge for many companies, though, is that the technology is changing so rapidly. The question they'll ask is, how is your solution actually sustainable? You really need to stay ahead of the curve. The way we stay ahead of the curve is innovate. Now, it's a word that's banded around a little bit. We have two Innovate UK grants, so the government is helping us out to the tune of £2 million. Pounds. One is looking at, basically, new, more nutritious food. The other is looking at cryogenic cooling. So, again, you've got to basically use all the resources that sit around you to fund these opportunities going forward and just stay ahead of the curve. I mean, this kind of change sounds quite expensive. How much does it actually cost? It really depends on what sort of project and solution we're putting together. We do projects ranging from £100,000 going all the way up to £4 million. But it's not really about the cost, it's what's the cost of not implementing these sort of changes. We're putting a number of solutions into the market at the moment which is giving this step change in performance. And so can your business really be afford to be without them? 
So you said staying ahead of the curve there. So let's look into the future because the pressure on food manufacturers is growing all the time. So where do you see this all going into the future and what sort of trends should we be looking out for? It's not going to be easy. We're all going to get on a roller coaster of change and there'll be highs and lows during that process. You've got to focus on their costs. Where are they spending the money? And we've got the capability of actually reducing labour. We're at 200,000 people presently manufacturing food. I think it's going to drop more to 100,000. We're actually using ingredients. Those ingredients get wasted in the processes, typically 5 to 10%. We think we can get that below 1%. Massive, massive changes. The quality, everybody should have great food. Food is for life. <laughs> Sorry. It should be paperless. <laughs> the industry should yeah. be paperless. Yeah. The traceability that people want, you want to know where that carrot's from. You want to know, at the moment, if you're using paper, things can go wrong too easily. Well, it certainly seems to be a fascinating future when it comes to food manufacturing. Harry and Jake Norman from OAL, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very, very much. much.